was talking with someone a couple days ago in regards to, um, well, this whole thing that's going on all over planet Earth right now, and how I sometimes turn on the radio and see how many seconds I can go before I hear about the Rona. But I was thinking it would be cool to have some sort of indicator that's automated. Now, I'm not one to uh, drag this whole thing into a video because I'm tired of hearing about it, but I think it would be cool to have a sign on the wall very similar to this non-branded light beer sign that just blinks anytime certain keywords are picked up on Twitter. Because, you know, Twitter is the epicenter for all news on planet Earth. And plus, I think it'd be funny to have a light on the wall that's just like flickering and twitching and going nuts because uh, certain words are being used in the API every so often. So, we, we are going to build a little light that I can put on the wall that will flash. And I think it would be hilarious to have this thing that's just going nuts in the background. But I remember, I've got an old Raspberry Pi B out in the garage somewhere. So let's go grab that real quick. And we're gonna plug it into the computer and uh, get the libraries and stuff installed on that to make uh, a visual indicator of online activity. Now, I know it's out here, it's in a little, it's in a little organization thing that has like three drawers in it. I'm not exactly sure where that is. I feel like it's over here, maybe. Let's see. Um, oh, wait, is that it? Ah yes, it's right here in this chair. Um, is this thing in neutral? No. Well, maybe we can do the old reach around here and uh, Not in that drawer. Aha! There it is. Um, wait, can I? Oh, 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 yeah, there we go. Maybe. <sighs> okay. So I forgot I had this thing from a while back, and I got one of the little uh, touch screens that goes on the top of it so you can. Uh, edit stuff and make changes and whatnot using the screen. Uh, it's one of these little things. Oh, I was looking for this. It's a power bank. Sweet. I'm gonna take this thing inside and uh, see if we can get this project started. This board has seen some action. This has composite video output. The connector is a little bit bent. But yeah, I think we're good. Um, <laughs> this will be great. Okay, we're burning an SD card now. Much like uh, Old optical media, remember burning DVDs, right? Yeah. Um, so we're burning an SD card, and we've got it there in the little adapter, then we're gonna jam it into this thing, and in theory, we'll be ready to do something. Wow, there's a lot of clutter right there, isn't there? I've never been more excited to make a video about the <laughs> I do have a monitor plugged into it right now. Wow, look at that flicker. But uh, yeah, I'm getting the whole thing set up. And then we'll get the script installed for uh, scraping the Twitter API and customizing a few more things. Do you want to reboot now? Yes. Okay, let's see if everything explodes while we do this. Monitor's off. And in theory, the screen that's attached to it and the HDMI monitor should be the same. Oh, it's alive. Look at that. We've got everything on that screen. Let me let me try moving the mouse. Oh, the mouse moves around. All right. Oh, that flickering's terrible. I can't see that in person. It's only on the camera. All right, sweet. Now we can get to work doing the awesome part. Uh, yeah. This has been three hours so far of screwing around. There's nothing like doing random... I wouldn't call this programming. It's more like copying and pasting code that other people have made, but... There's nothing like stuff like this to use up a lot of time. Well, we've gotten to the part of the process where I had to submit an application for review to access the Twitter API. And of course, there's this little disclaimer in the top with the magic words in it saying that they're gonna be slow at doing things because reasons. So, I have no idea how long this will take. Um, I've got all the scripting and everything ready to go. I guess I could work on the electronics now. I think I'm gonna keep it simple and just not use any of the Wi-Fi smart home stuff. I'm just gonna have two wires coming out of it that are gonna trigger a relay. And then that will in turn turn on the LEDs. So I guess while we're waiting for this to happen, 
I can start making the sign that I want to put on the wall because I want to make something that's very similar to that that's all black but has a big logo that comes up. So I think what I'm going to do is use the vinyl machine to make a cutout, have sort of a clear plexiglass front, and then cut out everything except for the logo I want, then underlay some white opaque plastic, put the LEDs inside the box or behind it, that way when they light up you can see a logo like that. Because if you just take the front of that off, there's just a big fluorescent light bulb inside there. So, yeah, let's get started on that. Finally, after a week, uh, I've been given access to the Twitter API. And I've created an app that gives me the access keys I need to go ahead and finish this thing up. So, I'm just kind of following a basic guide here because I'm not really good at writing Python and someone else has already done this. So I'm just basically starting with the, the stuff that someone else has already made and then modifying it to work for what I need. So for testing purposes, we've got an LED set up uh, to the Raspberry Pi here. This is one of the color changing ones and it has a, uh, a built-in resistor and everything. But right now, just for proof of concept is the only reason we're doing this. So once this light starts blinking, then I can do the rest of the circuitry and wire up a relay and uh, get an actual LED strip hooked up with its own power supply. But for now, we've got all the code on here. The Raspberry Pi is booted up. So we're going to open up Telnet, not Telnet, um, Terminal. We'll SSH into this thing, dump our program on there, then try to run it and see what happens. So I'll be back in a minute. I don't want to advertise these uh, API tokens that I've spent a week getting because I don't need people using them for nefarious purposes. Not like anybody watching this would do that, but I signed a digital contract with Twitter saying I wouldn't share them. All right, this has been saved now, so we can drag it over here using WinSCP. Yes, we want to overwrite. And then we can go back over here to the terminal and rerun our script. And it's not doing anything, but I think... Actually, what was the keyword we set up in this? Uh, our search terms are hashtag LOL. So we might need to change that to something else. Uh, oh, it blinked. Did you see that? It blinked. I'm not supposed to show the data. But yeah, it's working. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, I, I know that evil laugh. It comes out whenever something is awesome and working, but okay, cool. The thing's functional. Now uh, we can unhook this monitor, run the thing headless, which basically just means we don't have a monitor on it. And then, um, yeah. A little way to plan comes together. Okay, now uh, I'm gonna dig through all my components and find a little relay, get some power converters wired up, get an LED strip, and then, uh, yeah, we'll move on to the next step. And we can change the, uh, the key search terms to something having to do with uh, an unfortunate brand name of beer. All right, so this thing seems to be up and running and working fairly well. To control the lighting board though, I'm gonna need a relay. And the only one I have operates on 24 volts. That thing only puts out 5 volts. Actually, 3.3 or 5 volts, depending on things. And without driving all the way back to Wilsonville to Fry's Electronics, which I don't really feel like doing, I'm trying to find a relay. Then I remembered, I have this uh, old Wemo Insight smart switch, and it's broken. I think it got dropped too many times. I'm not sure what happened, but it's basically no good. Now, I know these things operate on USB voltages, which is about 5 volts and it's got a giant relay in here to switch the output on and off because you gotta be able to control like, I think this one's rated for 16 amps at 120 volts. So we're gonna rip this apart and see if it's got any usable parts inside of it. Let's see what we got here. Aha, there's a relay. And it is a 15 amp relay at 120 volts. Oh yeah, it says right here. It operates on five volts. Perfect. All we need to do is desolder this thing from the board. I'm gonna do some. Uh, I'm gonna do some destructive disassembly on this, and we're gonna get this relay out of here so we can use it. Uh, no wonder this was so difficult. The was that the ground? I don't know. One of the legs of this 
has this little plate that goes over and then connects to the circuit board right here next to the relay. I basically just pried these things out of the board. This thing's toast, so whatever. And now we can get our relay out of here. We just have to desolder uh, one, two, three, four pins. Wait, why is there only four pins? All right, we ran into a little bit of a bottleneck. The Raspberry Pi uses a 3.3 volt output signal, which is like a logic signal. And you don't want to go more than like 60 milliamps or probably even eight milliamps on that rail. And the relay I'm using is a five volt relay. So even if it was a three volt relay, you don't want to try and run it directly off of the microcontroller. So seeing as how everything is, and you can't just go buy parts right now, I needed a logic converter, which converts 3.3 volts into five volts, which would be usable and also sort of isolated so that you can use a separate power supply to run the relay and then not have a risk of overrunning the microcontroller on the Raspberry Pi. But you can't go buy any of those right now. So I've got a schematic here of a setup for a basic logic converter. Essentially what we're doing is this represents a Raspberry Pi and we're taking that 3.3 volt signal out and we're using a little transistor. I wound up using one of these little P2N2222A things. They're uh, these little itty bitty components. They look roughly like this. One side of them is flat and you've got three pins coming out. We're using the 3.3 volt signal coming out of that. And we've got some resistors here to limit the amount of current going to that because while this isn't necessarily an unregulated supply, we wanna make sure we're not putting too much amperage through this thing. And then uh, we've got a pull down resistor here it's a, it's a 10K resistor, um, but that basically makes sure this line gets pulled down when this signal is not operating. That keeps this from floating open. And then we had to run a diode here across the uh, relay because when that coil collapses, you can easily get like 100 volts feeding back through and you don't want to damage this transistor. So this is the relay over here. And ultimately I'm gonna be using 12 volts to power the LED lighting. Uh, that's why the schematic ended up getting drawn um, with 12 volts in there. I'm actually running this section of it on five volts because we're using a five volt relay instead. Now, lucky me, I keep forgetting that I am technically colorblind and I cannot differentiate the colored bands on electronic components. The only way I've been able to do it is with that Samsung Presenter desktop microscope thing. That was one of the reasons I got that in some older videos when I was back in the last apartment. It allows me to zoom way down on them, illuminate everything super brightly, and then apply color filters to determine what the different values of things are. I don't have that set up right now. So what I do is I keep all these parts that have the labels. I don't know if you can see that. Each one of these little um, things is labeled as to what the resistor values are. So I pull them directly off of there and put them right in the circuit and keep track of everything. But anyways, We've got it built up here. We've got this uh, late 90s sort of Radio Shack electronics workbench here. And this thing is actually really cool. It's got a bunch of built-in voltage rails uh, so you can test a bunch of different things. And there's a whole bunch of other options and things on here, but it comes in handy for this. So we've got our little transistor down here plugged in. We've got, uh, I. I thought it was a Zener diode, but that's just sort of a general purpose diode there. Um, I forget I forget what the rating is on that one, but that's gonna be clamping our voltage for when this relay coil collapses and keeps the voltage from going back and damaging the transistor. The question is, will the relay click or will it go bang? <laughs> I don't have the Raspberry Pi here right now, so I'm going to inject a three volt voltage into this, and in theory, everything should work and that relay should click. So let's see what happens here. Eh, nothing. Now I am using NICAD rechargeables or NMH rechargeables in this and we're running off the three volt rail. So I think the voltages on this might be too low. Let's move it up to the 4.5 volt rail and then test it again. Aha! It works, you hear it? We have a clicking relay, sweet! Now the value of this diode and the way this transistor and everything is set up it's set up for an ultra low duty cycle. This thing is not oscillating in any way. If I started trying to run this thing at like 
Oh, I left the piano on. I just noticed the red light over there is still glowing. Um, if we started trying to run this thing at like, you know, hundreds of hertz or something, these parts would overheat and explode. <laughs> um, but at the slow blink, blink rate, I'm estimating anywhere between five and 20 seconds between blinks for the keywords to be scraped from the Twitter API. That's a low enough cycle that all the heat can be dissipated and everything will be fine. So, sweet. I don't have to buy any parts. I just had a bunch of stuff lying around. So uh, now I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab the Raspberry Pi, bring it over here and hook it up and see if it will start making the relay click. And then once we verified that, I can move all these components onto an actual uh, piece of circuit board, get it all soldered up. And uh, actually I wonder, I don't know if I have any prototype boards left. I used up one of them on the remote control wheelchair project. I'll have to show that in another video. I did figure out the major issue though with the coating on that RC wheelchair with the Arduino. So that is like 95% working now. Okay, we're ready for testing. I just uh, added this color changing LED here as a uh, power indicator for this board because when you turn this thing on or off, there's like no indication if it's on or not. So that just lets me know that the thing's powered up. Uh, let's get the script running on the computer and test it for reals. And hopefully that doesn't happen. Right now as we speak, it's combing through the Twitter API. And as soon as it finds something that matches, I think it's still set to hashtag LOL. Um, it'll pop up here on the screen and then it will trigger that thing. So I'm gonna wait until I see something happen on the screen and verify it's actually running. Then we'll connect up that logic output and see if our relay clicks. Okay, there we go, it's now working. So we're getting data through and it's processing it. So let's hook up our output pin here. And hopefully we should hear this relay. Oh, there it goes, it clicked. Oh, clicked again. Yes, it's working. All right. Yeah, and yeah, it looks like we've had a few things come through the API here. Yep, it's clicking away, awesome. Okay, uh, I'm gonna let this thing run for like maybe an hour or something and verify that our components can handle this, the uh, duty cycle, which is about as close to zero as you can get. <laughs> oh wait, I just realized this thing has a buzzer built in. I'm gonna wire up that buzzer real quick so I can just keep an ear on this while it's running. Yeah, relay's still going. Okay, I'll be right back. Next up, we need to prepare the LED light strips that I wanna use. And uh, we're gonna use this little setup here. It's a controller that's designed to respond to music, but I don't need the music function, it's already wired up. Now we've got two strips of pretty bright uh, RGB LEDs here. This thing runs on 12 volts. So I've got the little barrel connector. Yeah, that thing works by the way, the beeper's hooked up. So we're gonna dip into our stock of power converters. I've got a bunch of uh, buck boost and buck boost converters. USB chargers and things. And what we want is one of these guys here. I uh, ordered these specifically because they have a micro USB input. Then you can tune your, so I'm dropping everything on the floor. Then you can tune your output voltage on this, I think all the way up to like 32 volts or something stupid. But pulling, uh, well, trying to get 32 volts off of five is gonna make this thing switch really high frequency. But these I believe are compatible with like two or three amp output. So uh, we're gonna grab one of these things, go out to the garage, get it tuned to 12 volts, make sure it can power this uh, LED setup, and then we will wire it up to that thing while it's hooked to the breadboard and give it a test. Yeah, workbench is kind of getting out of control. We gotta do a little cleaning. Oh, by the way, this is the breadboard that was on the RC wheelchair. I've put together one of the proto boards or prototype boards that piggybacks onto the Arduino. And I've gotten the RC Snubber Network basically put on here with all of the necessary resistors and everything. And this thing feeds power from the Arduino. So right now, the only connection points we have are these little pins that are removable from this. And I did fix the code problem on this, so it's working about 90% right now. I, uh, I need to work on the voltage swing a little bit because it, puts a, it outputs a PWM signal Zero to five volts is represented by zero uh, for zero volts. And a pulse of 255 is equal to five volts. And we need to get the voltage swing set up so it's 
between a value of 56 and 210, uh, which is a multiplier. Well, you add 83 to the neutral signal and subtract 71. Anyways, that'll, that'll be in a different video. Like I said, it's working right now. I can go in every direction, full throttle, backwards, left, right, and it works fine. If I go full throttle forward, it throws the joystick into an air condition. So I'm gonna have to figure that out a little bit, but um, we are well on our way to getting this thing 100%. Oh, looks like we're tuned to 14 volts for output. I'm gonna turn that down just a little bit. Oh, this is the wrong kind of tuning tool. Uh, whatever, I'll just use my fingernail. Now those lights will run at 14 volts, no problem but I don't want to put too much load on this little board. The higher the voltage is that you're trying to make it output, uh, the less amperage it can handle. So we're gonna set it, eh, actually we'll try 13.1 volts for now, just cause that'll give us a good amount of brightness and I think balance the amount of amperage it's gonna be pushing. Okay, we well, got this soldered on here now. I uh, checked the polarity of this barrel plug. The center pin is the white stripe. So we made sure we got that connected properly. Things are soldered through here on the back. I'm gonna use these flush cutters to crop down the leads just a little bit. There we go. And now, when we plug this thing in to a USB power bank or even a wall power supply, like this one, we'll have our five volts coming out of it. Oh, I just realized though, since it's running off a micro USB cable, I'm gonna have to put that relay yeah, I'm gonna have to connect the relay in one of these wires because it's easier to cut this and install the relay than it would be to modify a USB cable. So, um, yeah, I think I'm gonna cut that real quick and then we'll take it inside and give it a test. Although I just realized before we get too carried away, I should probably, ver okay, I'm gonna turn off that beeper right now. Okay, I'm turning off the beeper. Just realized I should probably verify that this little power board can power these two LED strips. This is a little infrared temperature gun, a little like pocket size one. I'm gonna check and see what the temperature is doing on our converter board here. See if we're getting too hot. Looks like the inductor is at about 72 degrees. 73. Yeah, about 72 degrees on average Fahrenheit. So that's well within our working limits. This is a built-in dimmer mode and the dimmer was activated. There we go, that's nice and bright. You probably can't see the color because it's all washed out. Let's see if we can fix that. There we go, see, red. Disaster is attempting to strike right now. I was getting everything laid out here with the LED lights and I was gonna plug it into our breadboard just for testing and making sure it works. This center pin on the relay right here, if I touch that again, I'm pretty sure it's gonna snap off. And it's like really, really loose. Like if it flexes this direction again, it will break. So I'm warming up the hot glue gun. And before I touch any of this, I'm gonna drizzle some black hot glue down over and cover all these contacts uh, so that that doesn't break. Because if that breaks off, um, I'm gonna have to get new parts. I mean, I could potentially take apart that relay and like solder on a new contact. But as you can see, it is glued shut. And I don't really feel like doing that. We're going to attempt to mitigate disaster with the uh, Patreon funded hot glue gun here. I'm gonna let that warm up and hopefully, hopefully we'll be good. Disaster averted. Um, I got the whole bottom of this relay potted in uh, the black hot glue now. So I think we should be good. We have everything hooked up. Our LED strips are here. Our logic converter is set up. Raspberry Pi, we're running everything off this battery. Power converter down here, relay. So let's switch it on and see if it works. <laughs> it does. Sweet. That's amazing. I have put in these search terms and let's give it a rip. It takes a minute for it to uh, start working. So we're going to see if anything comes up here. But we have a blinking light now that anytime any of those three search terms, which I think covers all of them, maybe I should put some more words in there, but it makes this thing blink. <laughs> How insane is that? <laughs> oh. Now I understand this is a serious thing and you shouldn't joke about it and all that stuff, but this is my take on something that 
is talking about it without really talking about it. Um, and the rate that that light flashes tells me how much chatter there is about it. Um, I'm sorry, I, I think this is hilarious. Uh, if you can't see the humor in it and you think this is offensive, um, I'm probably not the guy you, you want to be watching. <laughs> that is definitely blinking at a faster rate than hashtag LOL. My plan was to go to like tap plastics or something and get a piece of translucent plastic. I started looking around the house trying to figure out if there was something I had laying around here that I could use because translucent plastic similar to what this box made out of would actually be perfect. So I'm gonna dig around in the garage and see if there's one of the big like Sterilite Rubbermaid bins that I can donate to science and maybe chop that thing up and make the light box out of it. Oh, actually, one of these little drawers here would be perfect. It's about the right size. It's the bottom of it is about the shape that I want for the letters. And we have some flat surfaces that we could put the LEDs on the top and bottom and wrap them around, spray paint the rest of it black. And then, um, yeah. So that's the question now. Do I want to rob one of these drawers and use it? I think we know the answer to that. I'll be back in a little bit. <laughs> this, this thing is just blinking like crazy. Look, the light shines right through the chair. <laughs> this, this is my therapy. This is how I deal with terrible things. <laughs> Always something with this machine. What's it doing now? Something is colliding in here. Okay, we're gonna have to rerun this. Uh, I knew I shouldn't have left this thing on the floor. I just backed into my printer, this other one with my chair, and I cracked the screen. Uh, that's annoying. Looks like it still works okay, but. I think the uh, the back of my chair wound up hitting it when I was spinning around. Ugh. Yeah, it's definitely cracked, but... Oh, dang, it's not working now either. Well, um... I guess I'm gonna have to see if I can get replacement parts for this thing. Probably be cheaper just to get a whole new machine. Ah, that's so annoying. I hate it when stuff like that happens, but kind of the life of using a power chair. Ugh. Oh well, I'll deal with that later. This was supposed to be completely black, but something happened with the color palette, and then I think maybe the blue, the blue ink um, feed lines got clogged again. But the color is somewhat irrelevant because we're just using outlines. So all I need it to do is block light, even though it's not completely black. I think we should still be okay. And I printed this text in reverse because it's going to stick inside the little uh, light box and the light's going to show through from the other side. So I believe it should be okay. Worst case scenario, I was thinking I could just uh, run off another one of these things and then stack it on top if we're still getting light passing through it. Well, we're screwing down to an electronic supplier that I did not know existed in Portland. And uh, we're picking up a couple of parts to finish this uh, logic converter for the uh, light on the wall. Fortunately though, apparently a bunch of the traffic lights are out. I don't know what happened, if there was rain or a power outage or what, but we've got uh, 10 minutes to get there before they close. So hopefully all the lights aren't out because that's going to make this take forever. <laughs> Okay, we have a rabbit. Unfortunately, the bell is way up there where I can't reach it. 
Um, so, I guess I'll just call them and hopefully they'll come outside. Seriously? Hey, uh, I had an order for Dan. Dan? Yeah. Guess I can squeeze around that. <laughs> Thank you. WV. Have a good one. You too. Okay, we have our parts now. Grabbed a couple of, actually I didn't even know what they look like. What are these, strip boards? Oh yeah, they're uh, solderable breadboards. So they have built-in rails. I guess that makes things a little bit easier. And then they threw in for free, because it was 50 cents, some pin headers. So I think what we're gonna do, we're gonna transfer over um, the logic converter from that and the relay control, and also the power supply that is gonna be used to control that circuit. And we're gonna use these little standoffs here to have that hovering over the top of this board. So yeah, I'm gonna do that and then I'll be back. All right, moment of truth. We've turned one of these things into this. I, uh, I could have done the board layout a little bit better. I've got two power supplies on here. Since this is a six volt relay or five volt relay, it needs its own power supply. But the LED lights I'm running run on 12 volts. So I decided to go ahead and put that power converter on here as well. Now both of these have micro USB input, but they have pin headers for outputs. So I was able to just connect both of those to these rails on this uh, soldering breadboard thing. I've got the relay hooked up. We've got our little logic converter down here. And we've got a couple of pins so we can connect up our Raspberry Pi. So let's plug these in. There we go. We've got our light down here that I finished up last night. I use the sign machine to uh, sort of black out the front as well. And then I've got some sort of reflective paper in there. The LEDs are taped on the vertical surfaces on the top and the bottom. So in theory, when it lights up, well, actually I've tested it, it works pretty good. I might have fried this transistor though, because I forgot to tune the output voltage on this and it was set to 14 volts when I fired it up. And it was leaking voltage back through and triggering the relay for about three or four seconds while I was tuning this. So if it doesn't work, I potentially fried that transistor. I do have one more of them, so not too big of a deal. But uh, yeah, let's see if we can get it going. All right, here we go, console's running. And in theory, something should happen. Um, if the relay doesn't click or the light doesn't come on, it's probably because I blew up that transistor. Okay, relay's clicking, but, well, Clicking relay is a good sign, but we're not getting the lights to turn on. Um, uh, let me check a couple of things real quick. The extension cable I was using is not exactly reliable either, so uh, I'll be right back. Uh, I figured out the problem. So when I was soldering the pins on, the power converters didn't exactly fit on here with the two millimeter pin spacing, and they kept falling out and I had to sort of bend them around and stuff. But if you can look really close on this power converter, see it says voltage in plus, voltage in minus they're both in the positive rail. So this doesn't have ground. Um, so I need to take desolder this pin and move that up to this hole right here underneath that T. See how we have plus and minus on those two rows? Transistor's not broken, relay's clicking, that's good. Uh, we're just not getting power out of this converter because it's not running. So I'll have to go change those solder connections real quick and then we'll be on our way. I believe it's been repaired. I couldn't get this second board as flat as I wanted because, well, reasons. But I think we should be connected properly now. If you notice, we have one pin going to the negative rail and another pin going to the positive rail, much like this one's doing. It's probably hard to see. But yeah, let's connect it back up and see what it does. Okay, and let's punch in the code. Uh, I gotta click on the window first. There we go, up arrow, enter, and will it work? Ha <laughs> ha, sweet. All right, we are back in business. Cool. I guess I'm ready to 
probably need to put all this stuff in a box. It could actually be run off of a USB wall outlet at this point. So I'm gonna find some sort of housing to jam all this stuff in. Then we're gonna mount that thing up there on the wall. And I think that's pretty much the end of this project. <laughs> I'm gonna screw around with this some more and I'll be back. I know I keep saying that, but you know, this takes time and stuff. Yeah, so that's a thing now. <laughs> I'm ordering some parts and some boxes and things to put all this in, but for right now, it's just kind of sitting here on top of the shelf and running off of a battery because, well, the reason that thing is flashing means I can't just go buy stuff. I have to like order it all online and it all seems to be delayed for some reason. <laughs> So, I guess when that thing stops blinking quite so quickly, maybe I can go back to Goodwill. <laughs> but, um, in case you're wondering, it's set up to blink at half a second rate, and it can't scan the API while it's blinking. So if I speed up the blink rate, it'll actually go a lot faster. Like I tried putting it down to 0.3 or 0.2 seconds, and uh, it basically goes nonstop. That relay does make some noise, so it would be nice to put the thing inside of a box, but um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's, it's a random thing. Of course, as always, there's some sort of issue with the code. It'll go for a while, and then there's some sort of incompatibility with the search terms versus some random tweets that it comes across, and it'll stop running. I've emailed the guy that actually wrote the uh, code. It's called Twython. That's what this setup is based on. It's not 100% the code that's used to, you know, make make this happen, but it's the code that actually interfaces with the API. So there's some sort of weird issue between the search code that I'm using versus what actually um, looks at Twitter. I'll figure it out. I mean, it works now for anywhere between an hour or two at a time, but <laughs> yeah. We're gonna call that a day. I've been filming this for over two weeks now. I have made, a, uh, like I said earlier, I've made some progress on the RC wheelchair project. So we'll be mentioning that again soon, but, ooh. Just realized I started getting dysreflexic. It's time to get some food. All right, I'll catch you guys in a few days.